Now for our policy keynote, we have the former U.S. Ambassador to Asian Development Bank, Curtis S. Chin, who is also the inaugural Senior Asia Fellow at the Milken Institute. Curtis, who also hosts a web series on YouTube called Asia Minute, will discuss building resilient and inclusive cities and urban adaptability. Good day, everyone. What a delight it is to be here with you virtually at the 2021 edition of the Property Guru Asia Real Estate Summit. My name is Curtis Chin. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, before I took up my present role as the inaugural Asia Fellow of the Milken Institute based in Singapore, I served for four years as the U.S. Ambassador to the Asian Development Bank based in Manila, working on a range of issues ranging from urban sustainability uh, to really the impact of development in some of our poorest, uh, most, uh, most in need uh, people uh, and countries out there. So again, it's a delight to be with you uh, here today. Um, what I want to do today is really have more of a conversation with you. I want to share a couple perspectives from my life uh, across Asia. I grew up in mainly in Southeast Asia and East Asia and the United States. Um, but I wanted to share perspectives also with you from my time at the Asian Development Bank, including a look at some of the lessons that we can take away from others' experiences in development, in uh, urban solutions, uh, really in a range of issues which I think really cross borders in terms of the lessons that can be learned and shared. Um, so first up, uh, I say to you, uh, I used to be in the communications field before I became a U.S. ambassador and then with the Milken Institute. And I always say that people really, you know, remember two or three things. So what I want to do is structure my conversation with you today around a couple key points that I hope I can also help bring to life and really make more approachable uh, to people away from all the data and case studies, which I do encourage you to read data is so key when we think about knowledge management and learning from others. But just to bring to life, uh, based on my own experiences living in Asia, about things I hope, whether you're a developer or someone that influences development policy, uh, that you'll take to heart. Uh, yeah, I want to take a step back, though, and look at maybe three years ago, uh, uh, for those of you who know the kind of the Marvel universe. I'm going into the world of Hollywood uh, for you. There was a, a terrific film, which I encourage uh, you to watch, called Black Panther. Uh, and that was kind of a futuristic film uh, set uh, in Africa. Uh, I don't know if it was hundreds of years or decades in the future. Um, but it focused on a uh, mythical city called Wakanda. And I would say to, you know, be it Singapore, marvelous Singapore, where I usually spend most of my time pre-pandemic, or Wakanda, the world's best cities really should embrace uh, and build on their past. So whether it's an artificial Wakanda uh, or a very real Singapore, I think there are lessons that we can take from some of these uh, experiences and countries and stories that we might see in books or on screen. You know, for me, you know, normally based in Singapore, uh, I find Singapore can be a showcase of what future cities can be. Um, and that city-state's dazzling skyline and infrastructure in many ways are still the envy of other urban areas across uh, the region. I grew up in Bangkok. Uh, I lived part of my time also in Bangkok. I grew up in Seoul. I grew up in Taipei. My father uh, was with the uh, U.S. military. We moved around quite a bit. And then through my work life, I had the chance to also live in Beijing, in Hong Kong, in Manila, and just seen the diversity of ways countries have developed their cities for good, and I would also say uh, for bad. So as we think about Singapore, as well as cities across Asia, what are some of the lessons that we should be able to take to heart? Uh, for me, one is that when I look at the dazzling Singapore skyline, I say to people, let us not forget what is at the base of these dazzling skyscrapers, these amazing uh, shopping malls that have been developed. And what I mean by that is that uh, too often when it comes to development, we're focused on one specific property and perhaps less the community and the environment in which it lives. So, you know, again, go back to this movie uh, I referenced called Black Panther. And, and one thing you'll find if you watch this film, it depicts a vibrant African city of the future. And what is cool in this kind of high tech, you know, uh, city is that amidst those high tech skyscrapers, high tech, you know, vehicles flowing through the air, um, there is also a very vibrant community that exists 
around these buildings. And for me, this again is, is a key lesson as I think about how do we change policy to reflect the reality of how cities are being developed. Too often regulations meant for the good, like let's zone a specific area uh, strictly for commercial, kind of fall apart when we see how the real world evolves. And I say this because uh, when I think about the pandemic, I've just come back from New York City, uh, where while New York is coming back, it'll be back. Uh, right now, that midtown business development area, really a commercial area, in many ways remains somewhat dead. You know, people are not yet working back in offices, all these empty uh, office buildings. And then that, that community that went up around those buildings, uh, the food trucks, uh, the retail outlets, the uh, drivers and taxis without workers there, these parts of cities become somewhat almost like a little bit like ghost towns. Uh, and for me, it also reflects that thinking, a past thinking, which maybe needs to evolve as to how do we zone and develop a city? You know, maybe there is a need for more mixed uh, real estate development. When I think about uh, cities and, and how they flow and how they develop, and then that has become very clear during this time of the pandemic. So, so remember, think about what lies at the base of the city. So even as we look up at these dazzling skyscrapers, what is happening below? And here in, I'm right now in the United States, in Hawaii, uh, versus back in uh, uh, Manila, Singapore, Bangkok, where I'm normally based. And, and you see, even here in the United States, that continuing challenge of what I call the reality of inequality that persists. Uh, partially driven by how cities have also developed, where people will talk about, oh, that's a good part of town, or that's a bad part of town. Uh, uh, shouldn't we think through why uh, some areas are good and why some areas are bad, and how can we bridge those differences? You know, this pandemic year has been a particularly challenging year for urban areas, uh, particularly the United States, where people have left urban areas, people have thought through where do they want to be during this time, and, and those that have been fortunate enough to leave these urban areas, what do they leave behind? They leave behind people that continue uh, to suffer and to continue to face the reality of that inequality that very much has resulted also from those forms of development that we're so used to. So I'm gonna look down a couple notes for you. I, I took a quote uh, from uh, a magazine called Architectural Digest. For those of you uh, who know uh, um, architecture publications, I mean, this is a key one. And I'm, I'm going to quote from a man named Mark Malkin. So let me look down for a second. Mark Malkin talks about, um, rather than the ubiquitous glass and steel towers and sterile street life that we have come to expect in the cities of tomorrow, that movie Black Panther shows a colorful cityscape infused with African textures, designs, and colors organized to emphasize human interaction. All of this contributes uh, to that fictional capital city of Wakanda's unique, memorable vibe, one where skyscrapers rise from vibrant communities below. And really that is one of my key messages I wanted to deliver uh, to all of you who hopefully are shaping our cities of the future in Asia. Let us imagine, let us create these vibrant cities of the future in Asia that also have that link from those dazzling buildings that rise up, but also embrace and include the vibrant communities that continue below. Communities that are not driven out by rising real estate prices uh, so that someone else can develop another terrific uh, retail uh, or residential space. Quote, we realize we were destroying a vibrant part of our cultural heritage that we were demolishing what tourists found attractive and unique about Singapore. That's something that Lee Kuan Yew, uh, visionary Lee Kuan Yew said, uh, over time as Singapore uh, developed. And so why I wanted also to quote Lee Kuan Yew uh, is to say that when we think about our Asian cities and we think about our visionary leaders, let us learn from their own mistakes, their learnings, the lessons that they wanna share. And here is one that Lee Kuan Yew himself wanted to share. You know, Singapore has too long struggled with balancing the past and the future. Again, Lee Kuan Yew said, now, this was back in March 1995. We have made our share of mistakes in Singapore, 
acknowledging that many significant buildings were demolished as the nation uh, was built. Um, but he went on to say that we can learn from that. And so I would hope that as Southeast Asian developers also move forward, they can learn from some of those mistakes from the past. And that goes back to knowledge management. The data isn't just numbers. The data is very real anecdotes and examples of what people have learned. You know, culture, yeah, the diversity of Asian culture is much more than about physical buildings. Traditional communities and neighborhoods need also need to be nurtured, even as we seek to preserve some of the, the living culture, uh, the textiles, uh, uh, the verbal history that we all so much cherish in Asia. But let us also cherish that sense of community that for me, Asia has also long been known for before the rise of the mega city. And so here I wanted to share with you just a couple numbers uh, from a part of the UN called the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs. They put out something called the World Urbanization Prospects Report. And for them, they, they, they predict this pre-pandemic, but I think still holds true, double digit growth uh, uh, for many of our cities from Asia. An example, um, Back then, they had projected from 2015 to 2025 that Bangkok uh, would grow from 9.3 to 11 million people, that Jakarta would grow from 22% from 10.3 million to 12.6 million people. And this is all across uh, our Southeast Asian cities. So let us think through as we plan for the, the future, how do we ensure urban sustainability. I think that would be one of my key kind of second points I would want to say to you, uh, that let us think through um, that cycle. You know, Thailand is talking about now what they call uh, the bio uh, circular green economy, BCG economy, we call it. But it's that notion of looking holistically at our development of cities. Something the Asian Development Bank will also talk about. To think about holistically as an example. And as an example, I would say to you, uh, countries, cities need energy but our Asian cities also have to deal with waste, that garbage that we see sadly going into our oceans, into our gulfs. Um, and so one way to think about it, is there a role? I believe there is uh, for waste to energy that we can take uh, a, a product, you know, waste, uh, turn it into a product that, that helps lead to brighter and better uh, cities. So, so again, when I think about all that we're going through in Asia, I go back to the people side of things. So the people in our communities, the people at the bottom of our skyscrapers, how do we ensure more sustainable urban futures uh, for all of us? Um, I, you know, I, I talk about uh, uh, three key points. I think I, the last thing I might say to you is we think about those uh, visionary cities of the future. The, uh, I think the key phrase now is smart cities. Um, and how we're going to install all kinds of things to monitor things, learn from what is already happening. I would say just remember that uh, some of the things that we might do to make a smarter, more sustainable city need not be expensive and high tech. Uh, think about uh, green spaces. Uh, think about green roofs. Uh, think about all the things that can be done in a less expensive way than just the latest, greatest, most amazing uh, technology. You know, uh, uh, I began by talking about a Hollywood film, Black Panther, um, and tried to bring it uh, uh, into perspective by looking at how our own cities have developed in Asia. Uh, for those of you who saw uh, Black Panther, not to give you like, give away the ending, uh, but it kind of ends, and I'm going to go back to a quote, um, it kind of ends when um, um, the, the, the head of uh, 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 this city uh, or uh, of uh, this country, Wakanda, uh, is asked, you know, what is it that this city has to share with the world? Um, and his answer was, in a way, stating that um, there need not be one default setting uh, for what urbanization looks like, uh, what it feels like uh, in the future. Um, and so when I think about all that we're doing in Asia and the diversity it is Asia, I would say to you that whether it's a Singapore or some other Southeast Asian city that I've been lucky to call home, I think every one of these cities across the region will have to find its own path forward uh, in navigating this world and transition uh, that we find ourselves in as 
really rural Asia becomes increasingly urban Asia. And I would just say to you, remember the people at the bottom of the skyscrapers. Let's take some lessons learned uh, from our past. Um, and let's begin with some of the simple changes uh, to make uh, Asia, our cities of Asia, even more magnificent and, and hoping that uh, countries and cities outside our region will look to Asia and say, that's how we want to also develop. But all of this is really in the hands of all of you whether you're a developer, whether you're a government official, whether you're just someone speaking up on issues related to urbanization. I think we absolutely must come together in a time of increasingly divided, toxic uh, 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 words and actions out there, but really come together. Um, and in my heart, I really do believe that the Asia Pacific region writ large, our cities in particular, can help lead the way. Thank you, and I look forward, hopefully, uh, to seeing some of you in person uh, once this pandemic gets over. Indeed, it will end, and hopefully we will create a better, more vibrant, more sustainable Asia and one full of amazing urban areas. Thank you so much.